you inside Prather Coliseum with former LSU standout middle blocker Tierra Gibson. I'm Lynn Rollins. Tierra, certainly the best two teams in the league doing battle here today. Stephen F. Austin is on a 28 match winning streak, the longest in the nation. And this Sugar Bears team suffered only two defeats in the league this year. That's right. Those two losses came at the hands of Stephen F. Austin, who is looking to redeem themselves from the 2017 Southland Conference Tournament, where they lost in the first round to Abilene Christian. Well, UCA is led by a dynamic right pin hitter in Samantha Anderson. Sam Anderson is 6'3". She hits right side. She hits outside. We consistently see her going above the block, hitting all the shots. She certainly is a great offensive weapon for UCA. Stephen F. Austin has a potent offense, and it is geared by the setter, Ann Hollis. Ann Hollis leads this team with a lot more experience than she actually has. She carries herself so well, but you wouldn't actually know that before she came to Stephen F. Austin, she really didn't set too much and was more of a hitter in high school. That's right. It's going to be actually pretty hard to come by because... There's going to be a lot of relying on the second touch and second rally because both of these teams have such high-powered offenses that siding out is going to be really, really crucial. Yep. It's really worth mentioning that in the Southland Conference among team stat leaders, UCA and Stephen F. Austin are number one. One of the two is number one in all but four categories. UCA has the team hitting percentage, assists per set, kills per set, Stephen F. Austin leads the league in opponent hitting percentage, kills per set, and total blocks. So Allen is a really, really a athletic blocker. You see her hang time and just knocks it back down with one hand. Super athletic. She looked like she was a foot above this rim. Oh, I was yeah. just going to say, I think I would like to get her a basketball and see, see her in a dunk contest at the beginning of the play, Lynn. I don't know if you noticed that, but Ann Hollis, here she is again taking a swing at the outside pin. Very unusual for a setter to be having any time as a hitter, but Ann Hollis does it well. We saw the Southland Conference Player of the Year, Taylor Cunningham for Sam Houston State. She's a middle blocker, but she plays middle blocker like an outside hitter, talking about players who can play kind of all the way around, lots of positions. She's a middle blocker who passed out of the back row, and she attacks in the, in the middle front like an outside hitter. It's something that I really enjoy watching because I really rarely see middles at this level play all the way around. When I watched the semifinal games yesterday, I was really excited because I knew this was going to be almost a grudge match between these two super evenly matched. We know Stephen F. Austin is a great defensive team. We know UCA is a great offensive team. And what better opportunity for a conference championship than to have two really, really close, great teams battling it out. I really like Sam Anderson as a block. Look at how high and pressed she gets. A lot of times, Blockers can get high. It's great if you can touch 10-2. It's great if you can touch 10-3. But are you actually crossing the plane of the net? And doing so, you don't actually have to touch 10-2. You can touch 9-5 and cross the net with just your hands. And you'll take away more area than someone who jumps and touches 10-5. But they just go straight up. And they're just basically a hitting block for a hitter to go and tool and hit out of bounds and score points off of. Not only can Sam Anderson bring the heat and just level a ball, but she's also really, really volleyball intelligent. She can tool the block, she can tip, she can roll, she knows all the zones. She's just been playing volleyball for so long that you just get to a level, the next level, where you just know where to put the ball every single time. An attacking setter is always handy. She's got a really incredible IQ. Her coach told us that she's a 4.0 pre-med major and having an intelligent setter is super clutch because she's able to read what the defense is doing, see what moves the blockers are making, and she can adjust as needed. But she didn't really become a setter until she got to college. There are a lot of people who, I want my daughter to be a setter, so I'm putting her in setting school in seventh grade, and she's going to work with the best, and she's going to get to be the best. And she's going to go set at a D1 school. That really wasn't the case for Ann Hollis, but I tell you what, I have a lot of respect for a middle-turned setter. Middles are known for having probably the worst hands on the team. I'm going to be honest. I had the worst hands 
on the teams that I played for. So for her to be able to be really physical, to be a good blocker, to be a good defender, and also be able to set, she's really the total package. I'm gonna again brag on my girl, Sam Anderson. She's hitting 625 right now. Five kills, eight attempts, zero errors. Stephen F. Austin sided out during that first set at 66%. Coincidentally, that was Debbie Humphreys. That's her goal, 66% Central Arkansas siding out at 56%. And what a side out is, is when you don't have the ball, when the other team has just scored, they're serving. You scoring a point and getting the serve back is a side out. So the percentage, the higher the percentage of your siding out means the more often that you're serving, the more often that you're scoring. And usually 60 is kind of a borderline goal. Debbie Humphreys got as specific as 66. But 60% 60 is really going to help you win a lot of matches. We want to talk about some other stats from that from the first set. We have Haley Tippett, UCA hitting 250. Sam Anderson hitting 625. Steve Neff Austin hitting percentages. We got Peyton Redmond with 1,000. Mackenzie Hanna at 667. Donye Darren at 250. And Ann Hollis, our setter, 400. There's the go-to gal. Crushes it down the line. She can hit every shot in the book, which is what I love about her. I love that she can hit cross. I love that she can hit down the line, because as a right-handed person on the right side, it's a little bit more difficult than if you were a lefty. You have to wait for the ball to cross your left shoulder to get to your hitting shoulder, and hitting that line shot takes a lot of patience. It's a total veteran move by Anderson. It is so difficult to have great grades, and not just great grades, exceptional grades. These girls are 4.0, high 3.5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It is so difficult to do that and also balance the tasks and responsibilities of being a student athlete. She's just got really good ball instincts. I would, com I would compare her to, in football, a DB, that a defensive back that, that has a really good sense for the ball, call him a ball hawk. I would say that you could call her, I would say you could call Savannah a ball hawk as well. Don't count UCA out at this point. In the first round of this tournament, they're not new to the five set match. They're not inexperienced in it either. Just two days ago against host Northwestern State, they went five and won by three points in that fifth set. So they're comfortable there. They're comfortable in the fifth set. Certainly not advantageous to go and, and lose the first two sets, but it doesn't make it impossible. We see Savannah Allen getting super high. We talked about it. She's really athletic. But something that's going to help her shut down that middle is separating her hands a little bit. She's blocking pretty much straight parallel right now with her arms. If she drops one of those hands, that's gonna take at least one shot away from that middle blocker. On that previous shot, if she would have dropped her right, that would have taken that, that cross to right back away. So she's gotta think about what she what is she trying to take away? Is she trying to take away cross? Is she trying to take away line and then drop that corresponding hand? In the beginning, when beach volleyball was relatively new, pretty much the whole entire indoor team in the spring for fun, they would go you know, and play outdoors and play in the beach a little bit. Now, it's gotten so specialized that beach teams have their own set of scholarships, they have their own head coach, own assistant coach, and they go out and recruit beach-specific players. At this point, it's really worth noting that Stephen F. Austin is siding out at 83, again, 83%. That's incredible. A, goal, a bare minimum goal is usually about 60. Debbie Humphreys, her goal is 66. They're at 83 right now for the second set. We knew they were going to block really well. They're leading the match right now. That makes, I think, seven blocks compared to Central Arkansas's two. But going back to that side out percentage, that has a lot. Being able to block the other team has a lot to do with your side out percentage. You have offensive weapons and great blockers. The recipe for success. Usually the, the difficult thing about going, about double blocking is it's difficult for the middle to close. And it often involves, if you are going to close, she's got to commit, maybe take a step in the direction. Let's say another team has a great outside hitter. I might shade a little bit and take one step to my right, the outside hitter side of the court. But then that's going to make it hard for me if they set the right side hitter then I'm gonna have a whole nother step to take to close. So double blocking is difficult. It can work, but it often involves shading to one side or the other. We talked about C 
deep net Boston leading UCA leading in a lot of stat categories in the Southland Conference. Stephen at Boston, one of the things they do really well is limiting their opponent's hitting percentage. At the end of conference play, they were number one with opponents hitting 105. That's very, very low. Well, that's 105. That's extraordinary. Extraordinary. And as of right now, when I got when I got this sheet printed off, UCA is hitting 109, so that's right on target for Debbie Humphrey's squad. Hannon did a really great job of not giving that away immediately. She went up, looked like she was going to swing, and then at the last second went fingertips at the ball. So the defense was dug in, ready for a big hard hit, and then she just tipped it right into the deep corner, which is a great place to place the ball. She's the one I was telling you about. She's a middle blocker who attacks in the middle like an outside hitter. Very unusual, but I love watching her play. And Madison Wallace does it well. She actually started the season as an outside middle blocker. She's 6'2". I, I can't tell you how impressive it is for a 6'2 person to be able to be in the back row and get, a, get around just as if she's 5'2", 5 5'3". 5 she makes it look really easy. We can talk a little bit about stats from those first two. What really, really jumps out to me right now, other than the way that Stephen F. Austin's stats have just been unattainable. They've scored 40 points. So out of the 50 total that they've scored in set one, 25, set two, 25, they scored 40 of them themselves. That means that they're only getting about 10 errors total from UCA. 40 points compared to UCA, they've only scored 23 total points. We can get into side out percentage again, Lynn. I know you love talking about that. Stephen F. Austin, guess what they finished with? 80% on that second set. 66 in the first, 80 on the second. UCA siding out at 29 in set two. That's extraordinary. That's, I mean, there's no other word to describe it. It's off the chart. Off the chart good. It helps a lot when you're hitting percentage on that set 609 as a team. That helps tremendously. What's going to be really important for Debbie Humphrey's squad right now for Stephen F. Austin is that their foot is on the gas pedal right now. If they take it off and they let UCA back in, they let UCA think, oh, you know what, we might, we have a shot. We can go five with these guys. What's going to be crucial is how well Stephen F. Austin can stay intense even though they just crushed UCA, UCA in the second set. And I have to applaud Ann Hollis. She's not afraid. Like I said, new to the setting world, but she's not afraid to set middles in transition, out of system, a time when a lot of setters with more experience than she has would bail out and set to the right pin or the left pin. But she's not afraid. She accepts the challenge, and she sets the middle end. As a former middle, I love it. Haley Tippett went from hitting 429 in the first set to now an even zero here halfway through the second set. Two points in a row for the Bears. That kill will definitely help that, that hitting percentage. Those hand signals mean, can mean a variety of things. The setter uses hand signals to tell the hitters, hey, you're hitting this, you're hitting this, you're hitting this. Coaches can communicate with the setters like that, similar to baseball, similar to baseball. And then also the biggest one is coaches informing the athlete, hey, serve zone one, serve zone two, serve, serve four, because they've watched all the film, they've broken down the players, and they know, hey, Tierra Gibson doesn't pass very well to her right. So you know what? We're going to serve her to her right all night. She's going to be able to provide a much needed spark right now. UCA needs a spark. They need somebody to go on the run. And I think Sam Anderson might be just the character that they need. See, there are literally many millions of lights down on Cane River. It's one of the most scenic, family-oriented Christmas celebrations anywhere and has won awards for decades. It's a special place. But are there meat pies available? Oh, indeed. <laughs> if there are meat pies, then I'm absolutely there. It's kind of like throwing a pork chop to a very hungry That's wolf. That's right. Exactly right. Like a meat pie. Yeah. Stephen F. Austin won by such a considerable margin. It can be hard to stay intense. That's why I said they've got to keep their foot on the gas pedal, because if they don't, that's going to give UCA the opportunity and the window that they need. And here they have crept back 15-16. Once again, Haley Tippett. 
I told you Haley Tippett was going to bring it. You like her arm swing, don't you? I do, I do. She's not very tall, but man, she attacks like she's 6'6". Six, six. She's not scared of anybody. I love that. And those blocks obviously affecting hitting percentages. Great blocking by Stephen F. Austin, keeping UCA at 143 on the match. SFA at 406. If I'm Jenny Jones right now, I'm telling my team, hey, you know what? We have all of the momentum. The pressure is on Stephen F. Austin. So we need to keep doing what we're doing, having fun, playing loose. I know at the beginning of the season, the team didn't play as loose as it should have. And that was kind of evident there in that second set. They've loosened up and obviously have now tied things at 20. Jenny Jones. Debbie Humphrey said last year after they clinched that conference regular season title that they threw this big party in. That was great. And this year they didn't do that same thing because they said we're not satisfied like we were last year. We're ready to take both the regular season and the tournament. First thing I'm going to say is blocks. Holy cow. Stephen F. Austin, 17 blocks. A lot of teams can't, just to put this in perspective, a lot of teams can't reach 17 blocks in a five-set match. They did it in three. That's, that's just tremendous. 